Agent 47, let's talk about the top three tight end of the league. Ozzy 21, hit that like button if you think Trey McBride is a top three tight end. Let's talk a little Trey McBride, Bo Brock. Yeah. yeah, I saw that on the Twitter streets. Uh, Trey McBride uh, was a big topic of conversation, and rightfully so, doing some some great work uh, helping out and uh, empowering a, just like he was, same-sex couple's kid who Trey McBride is, is his favorite football player because of that reason. And Trey McBride sent him a signed Jersey and awesome drawing some great attention. And, uh, Mina Kimes loved it as well. And oh, she, she did. She told you and I that, you know, she drafted Trey McBride way back when in her dynasty league and it made make, made her feel like, a uh, Bill Belichick. And I said, are you officially a McBride's maid? And of course with that, she hit up her favorite Cardinals reporter, Johnny Venerable, <laughs> on Twitter. Mina Kimes, at Mina Kimes on Twitter. Brick Bridesmaid, CC, at Johnny Venerable. Rise up. Wow, I didn't even see this. I'm seeing this for the first time. That's interesting. Uh, no, I mean, Mina Kimes, an official Mc, McBridesmaid, part of this movement uh, that was coined by the chat here on PHNX Cardinals. wasn't coined by Bo or myself. It was coined by this community, PHNX Cardinals, we are all McBridesmaids. It's great to be able to ingratiate uh, our friend of the program, Mina Kimes, as a true McBride. Friend of yours, I guess. I, yeah, I mean, she doesn't really know or care who you are, but yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, Mina was fantastic. Check out our interview with you if you haven't already here on uh, our YouTube page of PHNX Sports. But I mean, game recognizes game. She was on mm -hmm. our podcast unprompted, just talking about how much she had an affinity for McBride and. If you watch the Cardinals last year, like it was such a crock of shit where Dallas's <laughs> tight end got into the Pro Bowl over Trey McBride. Like Dalton Schultz is a nice player. He is not on the level of Trey McBride. Dalton it's Schultz. Like Ferguson, right? Or yeah, for what it turned Ferguson, not Dalton <laughs> Schultz. He went to Houston. My bad. Um, yeah, whatever, whatever slummy Dallas tight end that they're cranking out there that that plays the same role in every Trey McBride transcends the tight end position for the Arizona Cardinals. He looks and plays like a Laporta, like a George Kittle, like a Travis Kelsey. There are only so many guys. And that's why, like, you're not seeing Turd Ferguson ahead of <laughs> Trey McBride to start this year for fantasy football rankings. As bad as those comeback rankings <sighs> were for K1, I've seen quintessential Trey McBride firm top five, potentially top three tight end in fantasy football this year. Like, the only people that are ahead of Trey McBride are Laporta and Kittle and Kelsey maybe. And then once in a while, the Mark Andrews sneaks in there. That's it. I mean, that's a good good company to be in. Mm -hmm. Can I be a bit of a, a wet blanket or maybe no. just play a little devil's advocate? Is that allowed here? Maybe, You're going to talk like, about all the new options and they're not going to yeah. be so dependent. That's yeah. fine. I mean, he, he, did, he did benefit and his emergence was, uh, I think... Um, it, it was I think it was it was out of necessity, but it, it probably was even tougher considering he probably got the you know the focus of, of the of the opposing defenses and he still was able to make play after play. But like is he gonna be able to put up I, I think over 17 games he can put up similar numbers with that being said, like he emerged after what week seven last year. So I mean, if if you're getting the same type of performance from Trey McBride, the good thing is it's a good problem to have is you got more mouths to feed offensively than just uh, our guy Trey Day. I just feel like the Petsing offense, which is the Shanahan offense, which is the Cleveland offense. Yeah, it always features the tight end. It's not In Detroit too, right? Yeah, right. like yeah, yeah, it's a perfect example. I don't think Kyler Murray's taking a golf kind of jump in terms of like fully mastering this offense. I, I would love that getting to the NFC Championship game. But what did Goff have to work with? He had number one in Amon Ron. He had a number two on the cusp of a number one in Jamison Williams. They had some quality underneath receivers. And then Laporta broke out and had almost, I think, a thousand yards from scrimmage last year. Like mm -hmm. David Njoku in Cleveland, I think, is the perfect. And how much they run the ball. And how much they right, run. Right, for them. sure. Yeah. And it's very, it's like the same offense the Cardinals want to do. And yeah. it's prolonged Goff's career. Njoku in Cleveland over the last two years, where Petsing came from, with bad quarterback play, with Amari Cooper has had about 700 yards per season. If Trey McBride goes out for the next five years for the Cardinals and has between seven and 800 yards a season, like as much as we want him to hit 11, 1,200 yards, that might be more realistic, but I think his touchdowns go way up this year. I think his touchdowns were a byproduct of not having K1. I think he's going to get single covered on 
not he's not going to be covered by against Chicago. Didn't they put uh, their number one corner Jalen? Is it Jalen Johnson? They put mm-hmm. their number one corner against Trey McBride because that's what the Cardinals were rocking yep. with at the time. Like that's not going to happen. You're going to see off ball lineback linebackers and safeties on Trey McBride. I think Trey McBride eight to ten touchdowns this year after having what three or four last year. The presence in the red zone yeah. is going to go up. So for me, it's I can sacrifice some of the yardage if it means more touchdowns. That's where Laporta was, was so deadly. It felt like Laporta was in the end zone every game last year. Yeah. I was talking to our friends over at DMVR Rams um, about Trey McBride. They want to kind of follow up about him, and uh, they must have found out you were on vacation, so they hit me up. Yeah, it's true. And- <laughs> <They did that. laughs> but they were asking about the touchdown thing, and I, I, I think it's he easily doubles his touchdown production last year from three yeah. to six. I, I think that's just – that happens – if he stays healthy. Yeah, I think six is well, – Laporta had 10 last year. Yeah. And it, Laporta was not their number one tight end to start the year. It, they took him a while to get him ingratiated in the offense. But uh, I love this from Baharo here. Drew Petzine has to prove he's Ben Johnson level. Ben could scheme wide receivers easily open. Major difference. I mean, I think Drew Petzine, this is his best chance that he's ever going to get to become – a high profile OC head coaching candidate. Like there's no better tools to be laid out for you with this receiving core, Kyler Murray coming back off an of injury, having the entire off season, a fourth place schedule. Like is as tough as the Cardinal schedule is to begin the year. I don't look at any of those defenses and say, that's really going to hamper what the Cardinals want to do offensively. I think mm-hmm. it's the Cardinals defense has got to be up to snuff for them to make the playoffs this year. We all yeah. know that we've talked about that. The offense can get theirs every single football Sunday. There yeah. is nobody on that schedule with the Rams now in transition without Aaron Donald, the Seahawks, I think, in transition without Pete Carroll, the Niners defense regressed last year, Buffalo's defense to open the season. Like The Cardinals should be able to put points up on just about anybody, and if they do, then Drew Petsy yeah. is going to get head coaching opportunities. Let's Let's keep this in perspective, right? Ben Johnson has benefited from having 34 consecutive games with Jared Goff starting Correct, quarterback, absolutely. getting consistent quarterback play. That, that does wonders in the NFL. And Drew Petzing had to get four quarterbacks ready to start last year for Colt, pointing Colt McCoy in training camp to Joshua Dobbs coming yeah. over with like two weeks to prepare to Clayton Toon as a sacrificial lamb to Kyler Murray uh, being, you know, coming off his, his most significant injury in his career plus learning a brand new offense and uh i think when you saw it down the stretch kyler murray he goes three and five matt prater field goal make away from going four and four you know and that offense was a top played at a top 10 clip when kyler re-entered the lineup so once when you get more continuity with between kyler and drew petzing i think you're going to see that bode well for for petzing in this offense and for him to kind of make a name for himself, not maybe the status of Ben Johnson. I mean, Ben Johnson is going to probably be the trendy name for a while until he takes his first head coaching job. Right. But what, when you've seen this Detroit lions team, the infrastructure be, was start like the foundation early on was laid and it was put in place and it started with golf. And then of course, leaning on the run game, and in, in, in investing in the offensive line, Penny Sewell, the Cardinals have done that with Paris Johnson Jr. And then you get the playmakers, you get guys like Amon Ra that step up, and very similar things can happen with the Cardinals with, you know, like Laporta, Trey McBride, Amon Ra with Marv or Michael Wilson. I mean, it, it's very similar. The blueprint feels like that's what the Cardinals are kind of following. I think the Cardinals can be ahead of Detroit's rebuild offensively. I think defensively, and I'm not – taking shots at Ross or Gannon. I just think Detroit had more immediate upfront help with the line of scrimmage. Like the, as much as I love Darius Robinson, who spoke today, he's not on the level of Aiden Hutchinson coming out yeah. of, of Michigan, but the Cardinals got Marvin instead. Like that was their counterpoint. Like I think Paris Johnson jr. Could have a similar trajectory as Panay Sewell, but then what they do the next year, the year before the year prior, they got Aiden Hutchinson. The Cardinals mm-hmm. got Marv. So the Cardinals continued to double down on their offense and I, I just frankly think like Kyler Murray is more talented than Jared Goff. I don't think many people would dispute that. But to your point, can he stay healthy? Can he be available? That's what separates Goff for them.